Hello and welcome to our service with the Church Without Walls, streamed on behalf of All Saints Ockbrook and St Stephen's Borowash. It's lovely to be connecting with you wherever you are throughout the world. This Church Without Walls service includes a new community corner slot, which allows anybody to send us a short video or message that can maybe celebrate a birthday, anniversary or a special celebration, or simply stay in touch with us and tell us how you are and what you're doing. If you want to send these in, please send them through to Moira, and her contact details are on the screen at the end of this service. But as today is to remember those who have given their lives for us, and those who are still serving for us in any of the psalm services, we reflect upon these especially who came from our local community here in Derbyshire. In Flanders fields the poppies blow, between the crosses, row on row, that mark our place. And in the sky, the larks, still bravely singing, fly, scarce heard amid the guns below. We are the dead. Short days ago, we lived, felt dawn, saw sunset glow. Loved and were loved, and now we lie in Flanders fields. Take up our quarrel with the foe. To you from failing hands we throw. The torch be yours to hold it high. If ye break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep though poppies grow in Flanders fields. They shall not grow old as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we'll remember them. We will remember them. Today's reading is taken from Matthew chapter 5, verses 1 to 12. The Sermon on the Mount. Now when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on a mountainside and sat down. His disciples came to him and began to teach them. He said, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is the word of the Lord. Well, towards the beginning of Matthew's Gospel, which is the first book in the New Testament part of the Bible, um, Jesus offers us a manifesto, if you like, um, the essence of his ethical teaching, and it's become known as the Sermon on the Mount. So Matthew chapter 5 verse 1 reads like this, Now when Jesus saw the crowds, he went upon a mountainside and sat down. His disciples came to him, and he began to teach them. Now in those days, when a rabbi sat down to teach, it meant that he was going to say something he deemed to be very important. And at the beginning of the Sermon on the Mount, we have um, what we call the Beatitudes, which are a list of qualities or characteristics that Jesus is looking to find in his followers. And one of them seems so apt today on this Remembrance Sunday here in the UK. And let me read it. It's from Matthew chapter 5, verse 9. Jesus says, 
Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called sons of God or children of God. And just note, firstly, that Jesus uses the word peacemaker. So he's not saying those who have a vision for peace or those who pray for peace or those who love peace. Of course, those things are really important. But Jesus is saying the blessed person uh, is the person who actually embodies peace sacrificially in their lives, who does something to create an atmosphere of peace. Now, some versions of the New Testament translate the word blessed as happy. Happy are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. But I don't think Jesus here is really emphasising what those people feel. Jesus is emphasising more what God feels and thinks about them. And it goes like this. The peacemaker puts a smile onto the face of God because God is a peacemaker. And so God responds by blessing the person of peace. So this could read, blessed by God are the peacemakers, for they are children of God. And the word peace that Jesus, Jesus uses here is a fascinating word. Um, its equivalent, its nearest equivalent, is in the Hebrew word shalom. And shalom is a fascinating word in itself. It doesn't just mean the absence of conflict, which can be a very negative concept. Shalom is much more positive. It means where there is found deep calm and reconciliation and healing and joy and contentment and blessing. That's the word Jesus uh, uses here. Now, in our world, so characterised by conflict and division and self-assertiveness, we really need people who will live a life of peaceableness and seek to be peacemakers. Now the Bible, according to the Bible, God is the chief or definitive peacemaker and God makes peace with us on the cross when Jesus died and through the cross seeks to make peace and reconciliation with a fallen humanity and with the world and the cosmos itself. It's a beautiful picture. Those who respond in faith to Jesus and become children of God are those who gain the family likeness and part of that likeness is to be a peacemaker. Now I don't know about you but often when I think of peacemakers I think of the big names, those who have made a real splash in their lives. So I'm thinking of St Francis of Assisi or Mahatma Gandhi or Mother Teresa of Calcutta or Dr Martin Luther King Junior and others like them, we thank God for their lives and all that they did. Now you and I may never have the reach and the impact of those people, but I firmly believe that we can have a profound impact on the world immediately around us in our sphere of influence by how we live, how we respond to people, what we think about ourselves, what we say, how we listen, what we embody. And as Christians, of course, we can be filled constantly daily with the Holy Spirit. In the book of Galatians in the New Testament in the Bible, St Paul says this about the Holy Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. What lovely qualities and characteristics. The characteristics of the personality of Jesus growing in us. And that word peace there is the same word that Jesus uses here in the Beatitudes. So how are we to respond to this? Well, I'd like to end today by using the symbolism of the poppy, um, so special to us here in the UK at this time of remembrance. Let's think of the word poppy, the first P can stand for praise. We give God thanks for the deliverance of this nation in times of war.
the O in the word poppy can stand for offering. We remember with thanksgiving those who gave their lives for us that we might know peace. And then the second P can stand for prayer. Today, let's pray for the places of conflict in our world and the people that call them home. And then the third P, of course, can stand for peace. Let's seek to be peacemakers and bless others and put a smile on God's face. And then finally, the letter Y stands simply for you. Offer your precious life today to God through Jesus and receive his blessing and then seek to live as an agent of the peaceful kingdom of God in the world now. Jesus says, blessed by God are the peacemakers, for they truly will be called children of God. Amen. Morning everybody, how are you all today? Well, it's really lovely to see you. Well, this morning I thought we could make a really tasty snack. Now that sounds like fun, doesn't it? The first thing we need is a, a recipe. And you know what a recipe is, don't you? A recipe is a set of instructions, including a list of ingredients. And I've got a recipe here to make a really delicious and healthy trail mix. Now, this is a recipe based on something a friend of mine from America used to do. Anytime we would go walking, she'd take a trail mix. And this recipe is my version of that. So, we're gonna mix them all together. So I've got my bowl, okay? So the first thing we need is some um, cereal so i've got some cheerios but you could use shredders or rice krispies or whatever cereal you like so put my cheerios in there we go the next thing i've got is some sunflower seeds and again you can use any seeds that you like or you might have maybe you've got some pumpkin seeds but anyway i've got some sunflower seeds so we put those in as well Next, we've got some chocolate chips. So we'll put some chocolate chips in. Plenty of chocolate chips. There we go, that's the chocolate chips in. What next? Right, I've got some dried fruit here. So let's, I'm using apricots. But again, you can use any dried fruit you like. So I've got some apricots there. And I've also got some raisins and sultanas. So put those all in there as well, lovely. Yeah, a nice big handful, that's great. What else have we got? I've got some broken up pretzel, so that goes in. Huh? This is my favorite bit. And again, you might only want to add these um, if you're okay to eat nuts and you can use plain M&Ms, but some 
peanut M&Ms. In there you go. And then also some mixed nuts too. And again, depending on what you're allowed to eat, what you put in and what you like. So I've put all of that in my big bowl. So I've read my recipe and we've added it all in. Right, I'm now going to stir it all together. So we stir it all up so it's all a big mix of loveliness. And then what we can do, we've made it all mixed up together, we can put it a nice handful and put it into a separate pot and take it with you when you go out for a walk, out to the park. And it's a really nice, healthy snack. Ooh. I shall have that when I go on a walk later. Well, did you know that Jesus gave us a recipe for living a happy life? In the book of Matthew, in the New Testament, the Bible says, Now when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on a mountainside and sat down. His disciples came to him and he began to teach them. He taught them a lesson we call the Beatitudes. Each one of the Beatitudes start with the words, Blessed are they. Some translations of the Bible use the word happy instead of blessed. So this is Jesus' recipe for us to be happy. I like the word be attitudes as it's got two parts to it, be and attitude. The beatitudes are ways that we can be and the attitudes that we can have. Let's have a look at a few of those be attitudes Jesus said. He said to be merciful to people, to be kind when they are hurting. Jesus said, be peacemakers when people are fighting. Jesus said to have an attitude of pure thoughts. Jesus said to have an attitude of wanting to do what is right. Jesus also said that when we are sad, God comforts us and then we are happy. I like the fact that Jesus gave us that recipe for how to be and what kind of attitudes to have. And Jesus says that, it, that we will be happy if we follow his recipe. Dear God, thank you for the Beatitudes. Please help us to follow your recipe for a happy and blessed life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, I hope you're all okay and I hope you have fun making your own trail mixes and you'll have to tell me next time I see you what you added to your trail mix and I look forward to seeing you really soon. Take care. Bye-bye. Using the words of the 24-7 prayer initiative, we pause to be still, to breathe slowly and centre our scattered senses on the presence of God. On this Remembrance Sunday, we remember all who have lost their life as a result of war. Young soldiers sent to faraway places never to return civilians, young and old, caught up in the crossfire of conflict. Jesus on a mountainside 
you taught that those who count themselves as blessed will not be those who march in armies, but the poor in spirit, the meek, the peacemakers, and those who mourn. Loving God, bring healing to families across the globe whose lives have been torn apart by war and bind up the broken-hearted. We pray for the people of Vienna, left traumatised by the recent gun attack. Father God, place on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes. For all those injured or missing following the earthquake in Turkey, along with rescue workers searching for survivors under the mounds of concrete, into your arms of love we place all who have lost their life and we claim your promise, Jesus, that those who mourn shall be comforted. Jesus, hold close to your heart all affected mentally and emotionally by the months of isolation and uncertainty since the arrival of COVID-19 and especially those known to us who have been diagnosed with the disease. In this moment of quiet, we bring them to you now and ask you to bring this time to an end. We pray for health workers, mental health workers and care workers going to work fearful of bringing the disease home with them. We pray for any known to us in hospital at this time. Be a shield around them and protect them and their families, we pray. For those suffering from crippling anxiety fearful of the threat of losing employment and income, draw near to them today and sustain them. We pray for the young and old struggling due to loss of contact with friends and family and the absence of normal routines. May they sense your presence with them. For those who mourn, who know the searing loss of a loved one, and for some without being able to say goodbye, whether that's recently or a thousand sleepless nights ago. Sometimes the journey to find your arms of comfort is a long one, and that it can be hard to walk it alone. So show us, Lord, how we can join you in journeying alongside those we know on that path this week. Maybe a text, a phone call offering a listening ear until they find your strong, unsleeping light reaching round to hold them in their darkness. And we end with a reflection um, of a song by Laura Storm, Story um, called Blessings. What if your blessings come through raindrops? What if your healing comes through tears? And what if a thousand sleepless nights are what it takes to know you're near? What if my greatest disappointments or the achings of this life is the revealing of a greater thirst this world can't satisfy? What if the trials of this life, the rain, the storms, the hardest nights, are your mercies in disguise? Amen.
Well, in a few moments, this service will end with a prayer of blessing. But firstly, a thank you for everybody who's taken part in the service and their input. And a few notices also before we end as usual. These services will continue to be streamed every Sunday at 10 o'clock. And if you've got any thoughts on how we can improve them or new ideas, please let us know. The web address for the church will be on the screen at the end as well. And this will contain a place where you can access our monthly news sheet, which shows what services and meetings are actually occurring. Alternatively, if you'd like to request prayer for yourself, our prayer email address will be shown at the screen at the end of this service as well. And also the information on our food bank, but please pray and support for it as there is a lot of need for it. So until we meet again, I pray that you and your loved ones are safe and well. And now a prayer of blessing. God grant to the living grace, to the departed rest, to the church, the queen, the commonwealth and all people, unity, peace and concord. And to us and all God's servants, life everlasting. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you all and remain with you always. Amen.